Hello, everybody. All right. I want you to imagine a scenario. All right. You have been practicing your buzzsaw. Okay. Your buzzsaw is getting kind of good. All right. Your teammates are starting to lose a lot. Okay. And then you're starting to get better at the buzzsaw. Now they're losing a lot really bad and they're starting to feel bad and they're not taking it very well. They don't like you anymore. You've lost all your friends, but you still want to get better. How do we have some solo drills to make up for the fact that we lost all of our friends, okay? Uh, specifically, let's talk about S-mount and an S-mount drill that I do uh, quite often in order to make those buttery smooth transitions happen, okay? Where it kind of looks like I just glide up to S-mount. And I'm doing this video because I've had a lot of requests lately because in the last few videos, um, there's a few times it looks like I'm literally teleporting, okay? And how did I get that way? This is the drill that I credit with my ability to do that movement very well. And um, there's also reaction drills for this, and we're going to get into all of that. But sometimes for reaction drills, you need one friend, but uh, you might have to either threaten or bribe them. Okay, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay, How, what techniques to keep our friends when we're too good. So, this is the drill itself. I'm going to let it play, and then I'm going to talk about the mechanics. Wait. I'm an idiot. Here. Okay, <laughs> now we're going to let it play and we're going to talk about the mechanics. So, so what is this idiot doing right now? Okay, what I'm trying to do, all right, I'm going to go back and pause it and really talk about the mechanics, is I'm trying to be able to bring my foot around someone's shoulder without lifting my knee line too high. Okay, without having to move my knee line out, because if I had pressure already, I want to keep that pressure. And the worst thing you can do is catch your foot somewhere on the mat. Okay, um, that stops everything. Okay, if your foot ever catches in a transition, you will lose everything and they will escape, essentially. We don't want that to happen, right? So, the drill itself, first off, what I'm, this is why this drill is important, okay? Because you, sometimes you need to be able to keep pinch pressure in order to transition to S-mount, okay? And it's important that you keep that inward pressure or Riddle will come on the mats and he will t take everyone's attention away from the video because he is just that fucking cute, okay? But let's go back and see what's actually happening, all right? So this is a scenario you get yourself in all the time. If you're playing mount correctly, no gi or in the gi. You have, uh, you've climbed up your opponent, okay? And you are applying a tremendous amount of pinch pressure on both of his shoulders. And what that is doing it is, is forcing his arms to come across, okay? And then it's one of those things where you, you, you climb up a little bit, and that gives you a little bit more pressure in. That brings his arm a little bit more in more. You climb up a little more, you get a little more pressure. And it's just this uh, reinforcement circle that just keeps getting worse and worse for your opponent as long as you don't make mistakes. But once we get as far as we want to be, we have his arms crossed, we have everything pinched. Now... We want to start to really pinch, okay? And we want to get, start getting ready to transition S mount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my pinch pressure with both knees, and without moving my kneecap out or up, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate everything down here alone, okay? So it's almost like windshield wiper mechanics, all right? So watch there. There's a point where my pressure transitions from pinching in with my knee. Now I'm curling in with this knee, and this knee is still pinching over here. So my pressure now is on the back of my knee, and I'm starting to curl this in, and I'm starting to curl that into my other knee pressure, okay? And you can work on that transition very slowly, okay? And you can do it with really an emphasis on the mechanics, but you do have to develop this pressure, okay? It is a squeeze position, especially nogi. Everything in nogi is a squeeze position if played correctly, just because you have to be able to stick stuff, and because it's nogi, it's slippery, all right? And now, another reason that this kind of drill is important, you know, there are times where you have someone's arms isolated while you're still in a low mount. Maybe you were grapevining them. You have this big opening to take advantage of. All of this is air. You could immediately get on his shoulder line right now if you were capable of doing it physically. So... You need to be able to climb up in one motion, get that pinch pressure going, okay? And then from that pinch pressure, you start to rotate your leg around, and the pinch pressure turns into curl pressure. Now we have our S-mount. Now we start to focus on tapping him, okay? Now you can also, you know, those happen because you isolated the arms, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. But it's all the same in terms of what you do with your legs. 
Now, when this is really relevant is when somebody tries to bridge you, okay? People trying to bridge you over their head are just not used to going against really high-level mount players, all right? Because it's not safe. You are elevating your shoulders, and you are giving up your frame on your shoulders, which means you no longer have the ability to stop me from pinching your shoulders in if I catch myself and I'm able to apply inward pressure with the knees. So here... Okay, I was able to transi transition straight into an S-mount. All right, sometimes you do this in one motion, but that takes a lot of practice. Okay, and when you get really good at it, you just immediately start to come up to that S-mount. Okay, and on these S-mount positions where you are trying to armbar someone, you honestly want to make sure you are extremely far down on his shoulder. All right, a lot of people mess this up because they have to bring their knee up really high to get the pinch because they haven't practiced the mechanics or their knee comes up during the transition because they aren't used to keeping their knee low and moving their foot around and that's where the mobility drill comes into play because the lower I can keep my knee line relative to his shoulder the more control I have if I were up here for example this is only has to clear before his elbow is free and he's out because I'm way down here now he has to clear all of that before he can do anything at all to get away. All right, so you can see already there is a huge difference. Now, right here, okay, sometimes you do this in a disconnected way. He tries to bridge me, so I end up bringing my knees up first, catching them, pinching, and then I start the transition. And that transition can come out a little bit differently on this one. Uh, Bird had his arm behind me. I'm still going to go because that arm isolation gives me a lot of attacks, okay? Okay. Now this transition, this is um, like a, a crankshaft transition, okay? I take a little bit of an inch and I start to pinch, okay? So let me go here. Okay, I climbed up a little bit. I guess some inward pressure, go a lot of inward pressure, honestly. My foot's on the ground. I don't, I don't give any space here. I'm not letting up my forward pressure, okay? I'm actually, if you can see here, I'm blocking bird's shoulders with either my shoulder, my elbow, my hand, my arm, something. Because I don't want bird to slide up relative to me. Okay, this is very important. A lot of people make a mistake where they, they climb up a little bit, and then what happens? The guy pushes off of his feet, and then he slides up with you. Okay, or he slides up past you, which means he essentially gets you lower on his hips, and then everything you just took, he got back. Okay, so instead... Something I do with the block, that helps me a lot to make sure he doesn't slide up relative to me. But if that's not enough, I take my heel and I'll put it on his hip, okay? So now I have two points of contact that have pressure, okay, to, um, relative. So I have both my heels here and I've got both arm frames here, all right? So when he tries to, he goes up trying to get me to go down, it doesn't do anything. I move up relative to him also. So I keep my inches. And like anyone will tell you, inches matter. And then I can start to transition up once I feel like I'm high enough to start pinching his shoulders in, okay? So sometimes it's a few different little uh, adjustments. One, and that's enough. Two, there we go. Now I transition, and when I transition, I don't let the pressure up. And then armbar specific, I try not to have to fall backwards to finish it because that is when you have a lot of time and movement for him to get away. And there's ways to do it securely, but if I can ever finish the armbar while on top of him, that's what I'm going to try to do. Now, sometimes you do it in one big motion because the guy decides, I need to bridge out, okay? So then what we did is we went through and drilled a lot of variations of these today, and then we had them filmed, and I told Bird to just put it all together, and this is kind of what he did, so I'm going through with what we have. Uh, so he does a big bridge, and he gives me a lot of room to move. You can see right now, his elbows are way up here, man, and I was able to just go from here on his hips all the way up, catch myself with inward pressure now i pinch and look at his arms okay and it's not that bird is small and weak which you know it's the pressure that i'm putting down i would do this to someone bigger than bird and you know i would do this to big bird it just is about your pressure okay pressure is important and especially for nogi it has to be consistent because inches given to your opponent will turn into a mile in nogi if you are not careful and you can see how important this little adjustment is, okay? And now this is a fun little trick that I like to do. Um, honestly, it started because I'm lazy and I have, a, I have an injured back a lot. And a lot of times I just don't have the pressure to try to fight for that armbar in a way that I'm supposed to. So 
instead of trying to fight for this bottom arm and bringing my leg over, leaning over and having to deal with whatever the fuck he's doing here, I just say fuck it. And then I just hook the top arm. And once I hook the top arm, he can't readjust this arm on top. This arm is just completely exposed. The problem is that I'm set up to do my S-mount transition on this side. You know, I want to do the arm bar on this side right now. But if you look, there's not really much difference in terms of my hip rotation. I can rotate this way or I can rotate this way. So instead, I keep my pinch pressure consistent as I start to come around. And I don't do it slow like that when I'm really going for it. I do it very quickly, but I do it... I consider the pressure more important than the speed in these positions, okay? Gordon Ryan is a wet blanket because he doesn't want to be fast and because he thinks that being fast, um, people will, will make mechanical mistakes and lose their pressure while moving at a fast rate. And it just gives people options to escape. I think that you can drill until you don't make mechanical mistakes at the speed that you want to go. So just a little bit of a philosophical difference. Ah, I had a stroke. But you can see where I'm getting at with that. And actually, I don't know if Gordon Ryan actually thinks that's true. I've just heard people say that he said that, and I agree with it a little bit. But again, I still think drilling is going to be the way. Okay, so these are why those drills matter, and you have to drill these. Okay, hold on. You have to drill these with partners sometimes if you still have any left, and you have to drill these in isolation, like like right now. This is me demonstrating how to fuck this up and what to avoid. If your foot catches, your knee pressure doesn't go where it needs to be. You need to be able to transition to smooth S-mounts. Okay? And the lower you can be while doing all these, the better it's going to be. So one more time. Low knee rotation. Obviously, flexibility matters here, but if you're not flexible, that's your fault. Okay? Unless you have an injury that's preventing you, you should be stretching and you should be doing something for your flexibility because it is a factor under your control that is very easy to adjust. It's an easy dial to tweak. It's very easy to stretch after training sessions, not before. Okay, And it just increases your range of motion and that opens doors for optimal angles and leverage. Okay, So when you have that, you can get away with being a little bit weaker, having a little bit worse timing. Okay, All of these different factors play into each other. And then I just do this down and back on a mat, okay? And the mat that you're on matters a little bit, okay? Because some mats are notorious for just eating your skin. And if that's happening, just put a knee brace on or put some spats on. It's no big deal. And then don't try to pick the speed up until you are smooth at it, okay? Obviously, when you get good at stuff, you do want to pick your speed up on your drills because you do want to do it fast when you do it live, okay? But don't get ahead of your technique, don't do it if you don't have the mechanics yet. Keep it slow. So, that is my little solo mount, solo S-mount drill that I do. And I make Bird do, and anyone that actually cares about their jiu-jitsu should be doing this if they're struggling with S-mount. Or, I mean, your goal really should be to get to mount pretty often, right? So, what are we doing with there? Well, we need options. And since Nogi is limited on what is effective, and S-mount is very effective we should put more time into it, okay? Not everything works the same, so we need to focus our attention on the things that do. So there's your video, guys. Go home and practice it. I know most people won't, but motherfuckers at least pretend, okay? If you guys have other drills that you like to do, okay, let me know in the comments. If you guys want some drills from other positions, okay, give me a move that you are struggling with, and I will see about making a video on it, all right? Because it's not rocket science. It's very easy to figure out what type of mechanics go into play in a, in a move set or a position. And how do I improve those? Everyone can make drills like these. Everyone can come up with their own solutions. But um, if you don't want to do any of that, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to find it. Also, like and subscribe, motherfuckers. I always forget to say this. And Bird is getting testy with me. Okay, so like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It makes Bird happy. And that's why I can use him for things like this, okay? And ever got, guys, give a, give a little like in the chat for Riddle, okay? He's the best doggo in the world. Other than that, guys, okay, let's stay positive and not be toxic. Eat your Panda Express, and have a good day. Bye, have a great time.
All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at andrewwilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.